Hey there. Are you frustrated by all the stuff in your life? How busy you feel? How it seems like you're on an endless hamster wheel? I know I am. I know there are apps these days that can help you with time management, tools to help you organize your finances, and now there's even AI to throw into the mix to help you kind of filter through things and discover new things. But is more truly the answer, or should we be considering less? I know it's a it's not a common thing to do, but that's exactly what we're going to explore in this episode. My name is Annie Dickerson, and I wanted to welcome you to this episode of the Life and Money Show presented by Good Egg Investments. So in this conversation, we're going to talk about a few key things. So first, we're all conditioned to add more, to build bigger as a business owner, to scale faster, to add more team members. But you know, sometimes the solution actually lies in subtracting and taking things away. Next key point is when approaching a challenge, it's just as important to think about subtracting as it is to think about adding. It's not either or, but it's both and, and we'll talk about that. And finally, with your life by design and your financial goals, subtraction is just as important there too. And we're going to talk about that. I've got some personal stories to share as well. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive in. You know, a lot of what we're going to talk about here today um, is based on concepts in a fantastic book. It's called Subtract very minimalistic uh, title and book cover, if you take a look at it. It's by a professor named Lydie Klotz, and it's phenomenal. It talks about all these studies about how our brains are wired to think about more and not less. But in today's society, in today's world where things are moving so fast and there's so much the value of taking away and stripping things down to their essence can really make that difference that you're looking for. Adding is all about, it's it's the typical path, right? You're taught to do more, add more to your day, bring in more tools, meet more people, scale faster, grow bigger. But to go against the grain and to think about, oh, Is that truly the right path or do I want to go the other way, a different direction? That involves going against the grain. And that's what so much of financial freedom, the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early, and building wealth through real estate is all about. All right, with that, I want to dive into a story I think you'll find fascinating. So I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm actually in Kensington, which is a tiny little town just north of Berkeley. And I, from my windows, I can see the Golden Gate Bridge. I can see the Bay Bridge. I can see the San Francisco skyline. It is, we are so blessed and grateful. So from where we are, we can see Embarcadero, which is this area of um, downtown San Francisco, kind of near the water. You probably, at some point in your life, have heard about the, um, the big earthquake of 1989. Now, here's why this is uh, this is important. So at the San Francisco, along the pier there, along the water, there used to be a double-decker highway. Now, there's still some of these in, in other parts of San Francisco, but imagine this double-decker freeway, the Embarcadero Freeway, right along the water there. And so tourists come and they can't even, they're like, how do I get over to the water? I I want to be, I'm in the bay area. I want to go see the water, right? But there's all these cars zooming past. And so there was this, uh, this woman named Sue Bierman, and this was many, many decades ago. Okay. But she had this vision. She was like, you know, if we could just clear that highway, we could bring more people in. And people would love to be right there on the waterfront. And so she um, she joined the planning commission and she then commissioned all these studies of it because it's a big deal to take down a highway, right? You've got to do lots of studies about the impact to the local infrastructure, to the businesses, to tourism. And so she and her team did all of these studies and all the studies said 
it would be a, either a neutral or a positive impact locally. Okay. So she's got all this data, right? Imagine Sue going and she's saying, okay, this is going to be a really good thing. But of course, you have to put it to a vote. So they put it to a vote to this, the, the residents of San Francisco. And I'm sure you can guess what happened. They shot it down almost unanimously. People were like, no, we need that highway. I drive on that highway all the time. My business is right there. How will people get to my business? People had this fear of loss. And they said, absolutely not. We are not doing away with that highway. We need that. And so what could Sue do? She had to say, okay, well, moving on to other projects, right? And then of course, in 1989, with that earthquake, what happened? That that uh, double-decker freeway, it collapsed. And even then, after it collapsed, when they were deciding what to do with it, people wanted to rebuild it. Think about that. This thing had collapsed. It was clear that this was not structurally sound and it was a kind of an eyesore, but people still wanted to rebuild it. But finally, after lots of discussions, they finally decided to take it down. And guess what? In the months and years that followed, not only did it not have a negative impact, but it had a huge positive impact on that area as well as the whole Bay Area. And now it's one of the most popular tourist destinations is that Embarcadero area, that pier area where people can go, they can picnic right by the waterfront, they can walk along there, jog along there. It's a beautiful strip of land. And so I tell you this story, I wanted to open with this story because it's such a a great example of what we're caught in, this cycle of thinking, we need this, we need more, let's add on to it, let's build more, rather than thinking critically about how can we take something away? Do we really need this? How can we optimize this, right? And so we've seen this in lots of other areas um, in life as well. You've probably heard of Marie Kondo, right? I know there's some controversy around her. Now she's got kids and so she's a real human now and she can't be as tidy as she once professed. But, you know, she's got really good points around how, um, you know, when you tidy and you get rid of things, they've done scientific studies on this. It actually brings you more joy. She talks about sparking joy. And when you declutter your desk and, or when you clean out your closet, that sparks more joy. It brings more energy too to that space. I'm sure you've done it before and you felt, you know, you go back to that closet or you look at your desk and you just feel this sense of like, oh yeah, like this is different. This is a new energy, right? And that's from taking away, not necessarily from adding more. So think about real estate, right? When you think about a house and you think about making a renovation to your house, if you were to remove square footage, that would actually, in most cases, decrease the property value, right? It's like you want to add more square footage. You want to build on more additions. That's going to add uh, to the overall value. So it's ingrained in us, this concept of adding to create more value. Sometimes there's value in not only adding, but taking away. But it involves courage. It involves awareness and mindfulness and going against the grain. I want you to think about how can you take this complex thought of your vision of a life by design or your financial freedom goals, which may seem very nebulous and very complex. How can you take that and distill it down to its core essence? And maybe you create your own version of the ER triage checklist. And maybe it's only one question. Maybe it's only two or three questions. But it gives you a checkpoint, a something actionable where you can start to make a dent in your overall financial freedom journey. Financial freedom is such a big topic. And there's all sorts of people out there telling you all these different formulas and different pathways, different investments. It's very easy to get overwhelmed in the process. So here's what I would recommend. 
Okay. And this is, we're going to wrap the show with this. So you can write these down, take these with you, um, and hopefully refer back to them again and again. Okay. So the first thing, the very first thing is, of course, you've got to get crystal clear on where you actually want to go. What is your idea of financial freedom and life by design? So that's a one, I mean, well, it's not a one and done because you create that vision and then you'll revisit it at certain points, maybe once a year, let's say. But you know, you have that vision in mind. And that might include a lot of things like luxury travel, a certain car that you want to get, a certain house that you want to buy, a certain neighborhood you want to live in, maybe, um, you know, freedom from not having to work or freedom to give um, to charities and nonprofits, uh, freedom of time to be able to volunteer or be at your kid's school, Um, you know, so thinking through what that life by design looks like for you, that's the first step. That's 80% of the hard work. Most people don't even do that. So start there, get some clarity. And again, this is about stripping things away. It's about distilling it down to, okay, what would really give me that sense of joy? What am I really after in this? What does financial freedom really look like for me. If I just had these three things in my life, I would feel financially free and I would be living my life by design. So I challenge you to first come up with that vision. And even if it's right now, you just write down three things. I want to be able to travel first class at least three times a year. I want to be able to send my kids to private school. I want to be able to quit my job and have passive income simple, right? It doesn't have to be complex. So figure out that vision. And then now here's where we're distilling it down to the essence, because then the long term is about this journey to building toward that vision from where you are now to getting to that vision. How do you get there? So here are my recommendations for the three questions you should ask yourself on a daily basis. The first thing is not so much a question, but is to anchor into one aspect of your vision. Close your eyes and just imagine yourself sitting in that seat where you have a button for everything, your seat going back, your lumbar support, your legs going up, you've got cubbies to put your stuff in, and the the flight attendant is coming up with a tray of champagne, right? Just Feel into that, envision that just one thing, just one aspect of that life by design and make it really real. And it just takes, I mean, what did that take? Like 10 seconds, right? Just take a minute to feel that and really feel the emotion of that because that's what's going to anchor it in for you. So that's the first thing is to, to think of one aspect of your life by design and anchor it in emotionally. Second thing is to just ask yourself, Am I closer today to reaching that vision than I was yesterday? Simple yes or no. Am I closer today than I was yesterday? And then third thing is what's one thing I can do today to get closer to that vision? That's it. You picture one thing, you ask yourself, am I closer today than yesterday? And what's one thing I can do today? And what that does is it strips away all of the fluff, all of the overwhelm, and it makes it very bite-sized. So today you're just focusing on this one thing to get you one step closer. So tomorrow when you revisit and you say, hey, am I one step closer today than I was yesterday? Yes, I am. Because yesterday I did that one thing. Great. Today I'm going to do this other thing. And that's how you get there is one step at a time. Nobody goes from zero to financial freedom like that. Everybody does it step by step by step. And the more that you do it, the bigger those steps will get that you'll be able to make bigger strides faster because you'll have that momentum behind you. 